Hey everybody, it's Derek Kilmartin from CodeOpinion.com. CQRS and event sourcing are often used together, but are completely orthogonal. I'm going to do a code walkthrough of the simplest possible example that uses CQRS and event sourcing to hopefully demystify and illustrate how the two work together. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So this diagram is often shown to describe CQRS and event sourcing, but people often don't really distinguish about what part is what. So there's actually three things going on here. There's CQRS, event sourcing, and projections. So let's show how kind of the flow works and I'll break apart what is what. So the first thing that often happens is a client makes a request and this is the first part of CQRS, is that we're gonna be separating reads and writes, meaning we're stepping at our uh, writes, which are our command side, and our reads, which are our query side. So we have two distinct paths. So our command gets sent in, and we're gonna have a specific handler for that particular command. A command is just gonna be an object. Our handler for that object, that command, is going to then reach out to our repository, get our domain model, perform the actual action of what the command represented, and if that succeeds, what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate an event. That event is gonna be persisted to an event store. So from there, that's kind of the first part of our command side is creating a command, handling it, doing something with it, passing it to our domain model to make sure it's valid. And if it is, then we derive and generate an event from that that we per persist to our event store. So the second piece of CQRS, since we've talked about commands, is the query. Now, what we could do here is we could just use our event store on the query side, meaning we could have our query object uh, interact with our event store, but it may not be feasible or realistic to want to replay all the events to get to current state. So before we get to the query side, we're going to talk about a projection. And what happens here is once we published um, or saved our event to our event store, we can have that event be published to event handlers. Now these event handlers are what are creating a projection. We could have many different handlers creating many different projections. So we have our event handlers that are basically denormalizing or taking that event and recording in a separate database. This could be a document store, could be a relational database, but a sep something separate from our event store where we're keeping track of current state. So from there, we have our event handlers that are updating what our query database is. Um, that are basically creating projections. So now that we have this query database with these projections, what we can do is on our client side now, when we go down the query side, we have our query handlers that aren't interacting with our event store, but rather they're interacting with our projections, with our read database, with our query database. So these projections, like I mentioned, they can be very use case specific. It's not like you just have one handler. You could have for every different type of query, maybe you have some view of shape of that data of all those events into current state. So the example I'm gonna show in code actually does that. It creates two different projections. So I'm gonna walk through this exact kind of diagram in code. The example I'm using is called the simplest possible thing that Greg Young created many, many years ago. I forked it and just updated it to .NET 6 in Razor Pages. So I have the app running here, and basically what it is, is like a little simple example of an inventory where you can have products or item inventory items. You can change the name, add stock counts, and remove stop counts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a new inventory item. So I have a bunch of breakpoints set up here. The first is on our on post of our razor page. So what we're doing is we're creating a new command, which is a create inventory item. We're passing it an ID, which is the new GUID, and a name which came from our, uh, the form itself, which is a called test. That was the value I entered. What I have here too as well is a message dispatcher. Now this is pretty much exactly the same concept as something like Mediator, where you have commander query objects that you want to get invoked or executed by a particular handler that will handle that message. So I'm gonna jump over to the handler for that create inventory item. And what we're doing now is we're creating a new instance of an inventory item, which is our aggregate root. And we're giving it the inventory item ID from our message, from our command, as well as the name. If I jump into the constructor for our inventory item, now we're getting into the event sourcing portion. 
where what we're doing is we're creating an event. So we're trying to create this inventory item. It's We have no logic here that says we can't do it. So what we're doing is we're creating an event called inventory item created. And in that event, we're gonna be passing it the ID and the name. And then you can see that here that we're calling apply change on it. Now the purpose of these apply change um, in apply methods where we take these events is it allows us to basically hold current state um, after an event is applied. So what this allows us to do is if we need to have various invariants or business logic checks and we need current state, these apply methods take the event and we can hold current state like I have activated an ID here. And where this is often used is when we go to our event store, say after the fact, where we need to rebuild what our inventory item is, we take all the events and we call apply for every one of those events that gets us back to current state. So if I jump back to the handler, so we've created our aggregate root, which is our inventory item. And internally, again, it's actually created the event of inventory item created. Now we need to save that to our event store. So that's where our repository comes in, where when we call save, we have this storage, which is just this in-memory event store that we have here. And it's calling save events, which will get all the events that we haven't persisted yet. And then I can step over this. And now you can see that we've saved our events to our event store. So I've illustrated kind of the command side and some event sourcing. So for looking at this diagram again, really what I just showed are two things, which is the top portion. I showed the command side of having a command object, a handler, but as well as that being segregated, I also illustrated how we're persisting that is through events and event sourcing. So we have our domain model that was generating events and storing that to an event store. So the next piece of the puzzle before we actually get to the queries is actually taking those events and creating projections that our queries will actually use. So that on this diagram is this portion. We have events that we're gonna have event handlers for, which are gonna create projections and save that to a separate database. So one thing to note is that this example is trying to simplify things. And because of that, everything is done in memory in process. What I mean by that is when we're storing our events to our event store, which is in memory, we're in the same process invoking those event handlers to update our projection. The reality of it is you wouldn't really want to be doing that in the same process because if an event handler fails, that exception is going to go all the way up the call stack from where you originally created it in our uh, razor page. So you want your projections to be updated asynchronously. If you're using something like event store DB, you're going to be using a subscription that's going to allow your event handlers to run out of process asynchronously so they don't actually affect the command side. So again, just note that this is an example. It's all being done in process, in memory. But again, that's for example purposes. So to illustrate the projection, I'm going to restart basically everything. I'm going to re-add our item and I set up a little bit different of some breakpoints here. So where we go to save to our repository, which saves to the event store, what our repository is also gonna do is then publish those events to some event handlers, which are gonna create the projections. So in the case of the sample, there's actually two projections that are gonna happen, meaning there's gonna be two consumers of the inventory item created event that gets published. There's gonna be one that is for a listing page that shows all the different products we've created. And then there's another page that shows the very specific inventory item and kind of its name and what the inventory count is. So when I go past save and I save these events, once they get published, here's my first projection. And this one is called our inventory list view. And we just have this fake in-memory database where it's just kind of like a document store. And what we have is this inventory item list DTO. So that's what's in this list is always gonna be these items. And it's gonna have in our DTO, I'll show it to you here, it has the ID and the name. We don't care about the quantity in this particular list. We just care about the ID and the name. So if I jump back over, we have another uh, projection that is called for our inventory item detail view. And you can see here that it actually cares about a bunch of different events. And one of them is when we create the uh, inventory item. But you can see here that its list in its fake database is this inventory item detail DTO, where it holds the ID, the name, the current count, which is kind of like the inventory count, 
in a version. So when we've created, we're at version zero. So again, if I look at the inventory item here, this particular DTO, we are containing, uh, holding a whole different uh, set of data depending on the use case. So if I jump through all this and I go back to the actual browser, this is the detail page. We can see we needed the ID, the name, and the count. And then this is the list page that just contained the name and the ID of the item. So we have two different projections for two different use cases. One projection was for this list. The other projection was for this detailed page. So the last piece of the puzzle in this diagram, which I was really just showing in the UI, is the query side. So we want to display stuff on the page, which I was just showing, say for example, that detail page, how do we do that? Well, our razor page is gonna create a query that's gonna to send to our message dispatcher that's gonna be invoking a query handler, and it's gonna use that query database. It's gonna use a very specific, like I showed, DTO for showing that list or showing the detail. So that's this portion. So let's see how that looks like in code. So I'm back on the listing page. I'm just gonna refresh it because I added some breakpoints. So let's jump over. So I'm on the razor page, which is just on the get calling these read model facade get inventory items. So what that looks like is it's just using that fake database that we were using for our projections, where when on the item was created, we were adding it to our list. So we can see that our list here has that particular item. And we're just using that list as a part of our view. So if I jump all the way back over, we can see that's how we're actually getting this. Now, if I go to the detail page, and here's the on get for that detail page, that razor page, I'm using that read model facade, but now I'm calling get inventory item details and I'm passing that GUID. So here we're using that separate projection. It's not the list projection, it's that detail projection, which was a dictionary. And you can see for that particular GUID, we have, there's the key, and then the value has our ID, our name, and our version, and then the current count, which is zero. So if I jump through this, then we can see that's how we actually get all the values to populate in our racer page. So to illustrate this loop one more time, I'm gonna call one more command called check in, which is basically adding quantity to our inventory, and I'm just gonna add one. So where I'm at, my breakpoint here is I'm at a handler for check in items to inventory. Now what we're doing is we're going to our repository, which is going to the event store. It's gonna pull out the existing events, replay them with those apply methods to get us back our aggregate root. So here's our aggregate root, our uh, inventory item. Then I'm gonna call check in and just pass basically the count that we're trying to check in, the number of inventory items that we're trying to increment, which is just one. So at this point, we're gonna go past our validation, we're good, and we're gonna create a new event called items checked into inventory. We're gonna pass it our ID and the value that we're trying to increment, which is one. And now what's gonna happen, once this gets saved to our event store, which I'm doing now, we're then gonna also publish it to have our projections update our event handlers, update their projections. So now I only have, I'm in the projection code. I only have one projection, not two, because the actual count, we didn't care about the list. The list didn't care about the count. It only cared about the name, but our detail cared about the count. So here's our um, handler to update our projection. We're basically going to our fake database to get that DTO. Then we're incrementing the count. We're incrementing the version and that gets saved to the database. So if we look back now at our page that refreshed, we're now at a count of one. So hopefully this illustrated how you can use CQRS, event sourcing, and projections all together. But do remember, this was an example. Everything was done in process and in memory. The reality of it is you may want to move some of this asynchronously so it can be done in isolation, like projections. Also, remember that I was showing three different ideas. You can do CQRS without doing event sourcing. If you want more details on all these specific topics, check out my other videos as I go a little bit deeper on them individually. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.